The government plans to introduce a health scheme to centrally control health funds. But would the National Health Insurance Scheme be able to solve budget issues for available positions? Joining us online is the Health Department's Deputy Director General in charge of the NHI, Dr. Nicholas Crisp. Dr. Crisp, thanks very much for making the time to join us today. We don't have enough rural health doctors or workers, but we've now heard from the Umtombu Foundation that they train health workers, supplying them to rural hospitals, but that there's not a budget to appoint all of them. Why is that happening? So the situation is that um, government spends uh, out of the fiscus, in other words, the tax monies that we submit, around 15% of government expenditure on the health sector. It's a bit of a tortuous route how it gets to where it gets spent. It is appropriated in Parliament, and the vast bulk of the health budget, around about 85%, goes to, is into the provincial equitable shares and is allocated by the provincial legislatures to health. And then they must make do with that budget to run their services. The uh, cost of employment, what we call COE, is included in those budgets that they are allocated, and they are not allowed to exceed the cost of employment ceiling. It is fixed by national treasury, and it's fixed by the provincial treasuries, and they must not operate outside of those, those costs. So because the budgets are being decreased every year, and in health it's about 1.1% per annum decrease in the budget, and the unit cost of employing a person is going up because salaries go up and allowances go up and overtime goes up. It means that there are fewer and fewer posts that can be filled to employ people into that space. So if budgets are decreasing every year and we have fewer and fewer positions for health workers, how are we ever going to improve the health system? So this brings us to national health insurance where we have to look at the whole envelope. Up to now, the country generally, and even in government, looks at the health system as the public health system. And the public health system is only 49% of the expenditure on health in the country. 51% is spent in the private sector. And that is spent on somewhere between 15 and maybe maximum 20% of the population. So we are only seeing about 8.5 million, 8.6 million lives covered out of a total of 60 million people. So you have this very big concentration of resources, skills, capabilities, looking after a small number of people, and you have a large number of uh, people struggling to get services in a public sector that is under increased pressure. So with the National Health Insurance, the intention is that we pool the resources. I'm not saying it will happen overnight. It certainly won't. But over time, one creates a central pool where the whole of the two halves in other words, 8.5% of our GDP, becomes available for buying services for everybody. So for a person who lives next door to a private hospital but does not have a medical scheme, they will now be able to get their services purchased under the National Health Insurance from that facility or from that provider. So over time, what happens is this fund builds up knowledge of where the services are not provided and makes plans through what we call strategic purchasing models or methods to make sure that we buy services for those people. So if I understand you correctly, you're saying that the national health insurance will help because it will have more funds than what provincial health departments have because we'll also pull in private sector money that the government doesn't currently have access to. So when you do strategic purchasing, there will be more money a bigger pool of money to pull from, and that's why you'll be able to provide doctors to areas that are underserved, right? So at the moment, the public sector spends 5,500 rand per person per annum on the public sector dependent patients, and the public private sector spends 26,500 rand per person per, per annum. If we combine that full resource and we had the full 550 billion rand for 60 million people, we have just over 9,100 rand per capita to look after healthcare. Now, that would almost double the amount of resources for people in the public sector. We're spending currently five times as much on a person in the private sector as in the public sector, and they're not necessarily getting better healthcare. We're all trained in the same space. They might get it quicker and in a better environment and with less trouble to travel, 
but they're not necessarily getting better health care. They might be getting more health care. So what happens under a national health insurance with a shift is that funds over time become available to purchase services elsewhere. In a rural setting, you may have people living in a small community in rural Eastern Cape. There's no general practitioner. And nobody's ever going to go there because there's never going to be enough people with money to pay that person to make a viable private practice. So over time, the government is the only solution to put medical officers there. But they need the medical officers in the local hospital because we need doctors to do the clinical, the curative clinical care. So the nurses are left with a burden in the community and don't get the clinical backup of a doctor. Now, under the National Health Insurance, if the fund is buying a service for a population, now a general practitioner is guaranteed an income. That sounds great in theory, but we often see provincial health departments where there are budgets that are just not being used because there's not an administrative capacity to use it, despite the fact that the money is very necessary. So how will the NHI be different? What systems will you have that provincial health departments don't have to ensure that that money reaches the places where, it, where it's needed most? So what will happen is instead of the money being given uh, directly to a provincial government, it will come to the fund and the fund will purchase services. The incentive is now on the management and the staff of that hospital, if they want to keep their jobs, to deliver a service and produce the outcomes that is worth paying for. Otherwise, the national health insurance is not going to pay for the services and they won't get the revenue. But the NHI is what we call a purchaser provider split. So it does not remove the responsibility of the provincial administrations and specifically the provincial departments of health to be the provider of the services. They will change in their nature and their role to be, behave more like a private company does at the moment in the structure, where the managers will not get the money unless they deliver the service. So that's the subtle change. They're still going to have to buy the medicines, employ the staff, and do whatever else is required to deliver a service. But they're not going to be guaranteed the money in their budget. They're going to have to earn the money and be paid for the services that they provide. Dr. Crisp, most South Africans would be concerned when they hear there's such a large pool of money, even if it's for a good cause. Corruption is something that will come to mind. And we've seen, for instance, during COVID that the more money there is, the more opportunities there is for corruption. How are you going to safeguard such a large fund? Yeah, so it should worry us. Um, and we should put mechanisms in place to deal with it. Every company has a risk management plan or should have a risk management plan. Every government department is required to have a risk management plan. But the way in which we set up and manage those risk management plans matters. So right from now, from the design of the system, we are identifying where are the risks. And there are many in healthcare. There are uh, perverse incentives and there are opportunities for people to collude. There are opportunities for people to provide care for others with, who didn't get it to take the gain and for the NHI, what's important is, number one, to design out the incentive to steal. And there are ways to do that uh, by simplifying the system and making it very transparent. So if the public can see everything that's going on and can see where transactions are taking place and who's getting accredited and how they're getting accredited and so forth, it is far more difficult to defraud the system. So if we see a pattern as we know is the case at the moment in the private sector where certain practitioners will be doing large numbers of tonsillectomies that are not necessary. There's no mechanism in the private sector to do anything about it now. But under NHI, we will definitely do something about it. We will investigate why those people are behaving in the way they are, not stand, sticking to standard treatment guidelines or deviating from what we expect. There are ways to deregister accredited providers who behave badly there are ways to remove people from various committees if they don't act in the correct manner. And there are ways in which we will deal with quality and, the, and defrauding within a hospital system by just not paying them if they can't prove that they've done the work that they say they've done. Thanks for joining us. Dr. Nicholas Crisp, who heads up South Africa's NHI scheme. Mm -hmm.